Hello, Rim of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 209. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I am blessed today to be in the KIB studio with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Well, I'm blessed to be sitting here with you. What do you think about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited, sweetheart. I was uh, awake at somewhere around 3. I finally looked at the clock. It was about 3, and I'd been awake praying and praying for some of our partners that have having health issues and issues in their families and things, and well, it was just like the Lord showed up for me and Praise was God. talking to me about the podcast today. And I just believe we are on the absolute verge of such a breakthrough anointing coming. And I think what God's showing us is is part of this. It is. I mean, I'm when I every time I get into this, it's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit because every time I've tried to share it with you, I start crying. <laughs> and so. Uh, <laughs> This, I, may, I may be the weeping prophet today, well, that's okay. but it's, it's tears we'll of joy. We'll get it said, won't we? <laughs> uh, guys, we got a lot going on. Uh, Go There For 2019 conference is really coming up here soon in Lima, Ohio on July 26th, 27th. A lot of my good friends, Dr. Dave, uh, Coach Dave, uh, uh, David Meyer, Coach is going to be there, Carl Gallops, Michael Spaulding, uh, Chad Schaefer, and just so many others, and I'm going to be there, and I'm really looking forward to that conference. I think that God is going to speak a – a word in season uh, at that conference, and it's of course it's hosted by my good friend Dr. Mike Spalding, and uh, it, it's going to be an intense time because of the, they're 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 trying to squeeze all this into into just two days, and uh, so I'm I'm expecting the believers when they leave there they're going to glow at night they're going to be radioactive with the power of God uh, at that conference. Uh, also, a lot of those that listen to KIB don't realize we also have Biblical Life TV. Uh, which is detailed teachings of the Word of God. I think we have we have uh, close to uh, 400 teachings now on our YouTube channel, and it's at YouTube slash Biblical Life. And we also have a backup channel in case one of these days we make YouTube mad. And uh, it's at Vimeo back uh, dot com backslash Biblical Life TV. And uh, so many people are using it just to get deep into the Word of God. It's it's different than the podcast because I'm actually teaching uh, from the pulpit. And uh, just another way of just enhancing your walk with God and, and getting deeper into the Word. I want to encourage everybody about that. Uh, today's podcast, I'm, I'm entitling Passover and the Scroll of Destiny. You know, when you when you look at uh, major prophetic events, and this is one of the things, you know, God uses patterns. There, there are patterns in the tabernacle. There are patterns in the feast because the feasts are divine rehearsals so that when the real comes, we, we, we're ready. Mm-hmm. And uh, God always tells us the end from the beginning, and there's, and because God is is one of, one of the concepts of God is that He is kadosh, He is holy, and what that means, He is so extremely other than any of creation. Okay, He's separate from creation that unless He would reveal Himself, creation itself can't really comprehend who He is. That's why the the Word of God is its primary purpose is to reveal God reveal the problem, and reveal his plan of, of redemption for humanity. Because without that, we would be clueless. And so there, there are, when, whenever God begins to act, there are, there are characteristic fingerprints. Now, in a fingerprint, there are patterns. That, that's, what, that's what gives you a fingerprint, and it's unique patterns to the individual person. When, when God does things, many times when we see major prophetic events that are promised in the Word of God, we will see smaller versions of it that go throughout history wherever we can find the fingerprint of God. A, a good example of that is Jesus has his disciples, and they're out preaching and doing their stuff. And these other guys come along, and they don't have their, their same credential cards from, uh, from you know the Jesus discipleship. Uh, association or whatever, and they get all upset, saying these guys are preaching, uh, are preaching in your name, and they're not a part of of the twelve. They're not a part of the one twenty. They're not a part of the ones that uh, seventy that you have commissioned. And Jesus said, "Hush, I I have sheep that you don't even know of." And what that was, was that was a smaller ripple, prophetic ripple of what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost and beyond was actually beginning to manifest 
before even the crucifixion of Christ. Now, dispensationalists will call that an overlapping of dispensation, that one dispensation can overlap another. I tend to view it as a prophetic echo. And so as many times when we look at major events in the Word of God, pivotal ones, we will see similar ripples that, that bear the fingerprint of God so that we know that it's him within our generation. Because, you know, it, we're, we're going to be getting into Revelation chapter 5 today, and I, I think we're, we're at a, a very prophetic season with this. Uh, but so that, but when, we, when we review that and we understand the dynamic of what's happening there, and we know it's a major event from God, so I mean it's not just God's thumbprint. God's hands are all over it. We see the pattern of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And when we see that pattern, we can then look at where we are and what God's doing. And if we can find similar patterns, it is an assurance to us that it's God moving and not the enemy. And that, that's, why I love, that's why I love the Word of God, because it helps us not only understand the future, uh, but also gives us surety about right now, where we're at, because we can see his fingerprints. Uh, there was a song that just recently came out that the first time I heard it almost drove off the road. Uh, it is He is Worthy by Chris Tomlin, and that's taken from Revelation chapter 5. And, I mean, there's a strong anointing on that. There is a prophetic unction with that. And I remember listening, and uh, there's a, several Christian radio stations we listen to here locally, and they were they were trying to describe the song. And they said, well, it's, it's very unusual. It's, it's kind of unique. And, and I really wasn't sure about it. They, they, they had no because it talks about how the world's broken and that it's getting darker and that evil's doing more and how that we need Jesus to come back and fix it, you know. And, boy, if there was ever time, boy, it's, it's right yeah, now. that's right. And they had no grid for it. They were trying to uh, they were trying to put it, well, you know, there's things during the day that might happen that we, you know, that we could praise him. They didn't understand the dynamic of the complexity of how it unfolded in the book of Revelation and how it was so prophetic because we're not being taught in time prophecy anymore. Just, you know, there's, there's some conferences that we go to that it's being taught, and there are a few churches that teach it. I, I remember back in the 80s, uh, it was being taught everywhere. Uh, even, even in the 70s, when, uh, when, I, was, when I, sur- I surrendered to ministry at 13, and I think I was about 15, this guy in the, in the Missionary Baptist Association that had wrote his own commentary on the book of Revelation. Now, he was like 80-something, uh, when when he came to our church and ministered, he was kind of like a rock star, because he had he had taken the time to really understand and 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 people respected him for that. And and so when when he came, and he toured all the the all the churches within the St. Louis area for that association, and everybody stopped and said, "We need to listen to this." Uh, nowadays, in many churches, and I, I'm hearing from even some of my colleagues that they're saying there are a lot of churches I go into, they tell me not to teach on this stuff. We don't want to scare the sheep. Well, if you understand, and this is part of what you're going to be getting into, if you really understand the dynamic and who our hope is in. Yeah, it's not scary. It's not scary. <laughs> um, I remember years ago there was a Christian comedian talking about this, and he said, he said, everybody wants to run to the book of Revelation. He says, you can find out where people are with the book of Revelation. He says, because a, a believer solid in the word, he gets this big grin on his face, and there's this assurance. He said, everybody else is freaking out. But he said, someone who really understands Jesus. He said, they did, they just get this grin on their face. You know, it's like, let her rip, tater chip. I'm ready to get this thing done. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I, think, I think that's a sense of what's kind of going on today with the remnant. We know they're, they're, we are living in highly prophetic times. That's one of the things that Carl Gopp, everywhere he goes, teaches that we are living in some of the most prophetic times yeah. in history. The only time that it would have been more prophetic is when Jesus walked the shores yeah. of Galilee. That that technology is finally being revealed and coming together that's going to enable the mark of the beast and, and enable the beast system and, and all these different things. It's, it's, it's cascading together in an, an unprecedented rate. But it, the good news is, Mike, is in everything God's been showing me this last week, it's talking about how God's getting ready to give us the grace to be more than a conqueror. Absolutely. And, and the remnant's been pressed down. And just, I mean, Satan's just been hitting everybody and just trying to pull out all the stops to with sickness, with attacks, with, you know, family troubles, all these things. But we're getting ready to see 
Jesus step in. Yeah, that's what this whole podcast is about. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, one of the things that we need to understand, we're talking about prophetic events, and they build one upon the other. Right. Now, what we're going to find in Revelation chapter 5 is only, you know, th- th- there's, a, there's, a, there's a phrase in, in the book of Acts that said that when, when Jesus went to the cross and the death, burial, and resurrection, God did it according to his own counsel. In other words, God had set a plan within himself that the angels didn't know, that hell didn't know. Let me tell you something. The resurrection freaked the devil out. Mm-hmm. And, what, and what proceeded before that freaked the devil out. So Passover is connected to the season that we're currently in as well as the one that we're about to enter. If Jesus had not died for our sins, conquered hell, death, and the grave, and rose victorious to sit on the right hand of the Father, then the the, pass, the the Shavuot that we would have seen after the crucifixion of Christ would have been like every other Shavuot. They would have just went through the motions mm-hmm. because the fulfillment had what was not set to come. The fire of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can only be given because Jesus was the Lamb of God, that, that his blood was now over the doorpost, that there were those that were blood-washed, blood-bought, that after his resurrection he met with his disciples. And here again the Creator, the one that created Adam in the garden that breathed life into him, he said he breathed into them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And before that, Mike, they were all in one accord. Yeah. So what's Satan been doing? Just hammering people in the last few years to cause discord. Oh, absolutely. Bringing up so many different opinions, so many different subjects, so many things towards such diverse, and people getting in fights and calling each other names and all this stuff. He's doing it on purpose because if we get in one accord, then the kingdom of darkness is going to be shaken. And and here's the thing. We can't come in one accord in our eschatological prophecy charts. Right. There's only one place where we can come in accord. And every believer can, can come in accord on this season we're in. Now, I'm going to say this as a warning. God's getting ready to do something so huge that you don't want to be going around with bunnies and Easter eggs this no. coming Easter. This this is something that I believe every believer can join in, but don't don't partake in that yeah. Babylonian thing because when this power comes, it's going to judge some of that. It is. And so but we can all come in one accord. Uh, you know, I was looking at all, all the things. I'll talk about it later, about like everything God was showing me was about the rock. God's our rock and things. And so there's something so significant about all of this and, and being in agreement. Yeah. And that's, that's what Satan's trying to get us to do. And I believe that we can, if we can get a a large enough body of believers to come into agreement with us on this one subject, leaving Babylon out of it, just come into agreement on the truth of this season. I believe hell's going to tremble. I believe the power of God is going to come through. Because when you start putting in eggs and Easter bunnies, mm-hmm. what it does is it muddies the water. And you need what we need is a pure stream of water yeah. coming from the throne of God that is such power, water, fire, light, that is going to back up the enemy, break open you know, all the, the prison doors, uh, bring, bring those miracles we've been praying for for years and years. Mike, this is that year. Yeah. And let me share this, too. If you're in the Hebraic Roots Movement and you bring in uh, the Talmud, the Mishnah, and the Kabbalah, you're muddying the waters just as Same much. Same stuff, yeah. Uh, there's, there's two people in, in, in biblical history you never mess with. You never mess with Moses and you never mess with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And uh, you mess with either one of those, you're going to have words with me, okay? You know, it's like the the old saying when two knights about ready to fight, I will have words with thee, you know. <laughs> you, you don't mess with them, yet the rabbis, to establish their own power and their authority, they say that Moses is 12 rows behind all the rabbis as far as what heaven is concerned. And and uh, they, they had to do that to displace, uh, to, to build their own authority. It's usurped authority. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, we, we, we have got to go back to the Word of God. If it's not in the Word, if it's not in the Word, 
in the Word, not in the Talmud, not in Bible commentaries, not, not in the traditions of men, whether it is Jewish tradition or Christian tradition. If it's not in the Word, don't do it. Okay? Now, if Jesus hadn't been the Passover lamb, there would have never been a Pentecost. And we read, we're getting ready to read here in Revelation 5. Now, Mary, you want to talk about agreement? Did you know in Revelation 5, hell itself has to come in agreement about who the lamb is? <laughs> Every knee's got to bow. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to read in Revelation 5 that if he had not been the lamb that was slain and victorious over death, hell, and the grave, that he could not have opened the scroll He's of destiny. He's the only one worthy. Oh. Now, I ran across this term as I was researching. The New International Commentary calls the scroll with the seven seals the scroll of destiny. And uh, many scholars and commentators call, call it that because, you know, I, I, one of the things I had been taught was that it was the uh, warranty or the, the lease to planet Earth and that Jesus was stripping it off. And, and that kind of, but I, I think what it really is, is God had that plan. He has, he has a plan of redemption that's only going to begin really unfolding, and it can only be revealed through Jesus as the lamb who is the lion, okay, at that moment, because he is the Passover lamb, he, he rose victorious. Only he can open this. Now, there's seven seals. Seals were established on documents to maintain secrecy and could only be opened by the one who was authorized to open it. Seven is the number of absolute perfection. And so since there are seven seals on it, and see what we see this repeated because we have seven seals, absolute perfect secrecy the angels didn't know mary the angels didn't know you know when they were getting ready to crucify jesus and he said i could call for ten thousand angels uh, you know when i read that i, I tried to imagine what that's like and i i could see legions of angels just on the seal of heaven and if all the father had to do was say get them there would not have been a planet left no because they didn't understand what was going on they would have rescued him because they didn't Immediately. know. Immediately. Yeah. There wouldn't have been a Roman army left. There wouldn't have been anything left. But Jesus didn't ask because only he, the Father, and the Holy Spirit knew the plan. Knew the plan. <laughs> Hell didn't know the plan. No. The Bible says if they would have known, they would have not crucified the yeah, Lord of glory. Oh, he would have never done that. Okay, now, <laughs> Sealed his fate. Here we are in here without Kleenex. Um, so they didn't know. Now listen to this. Verse 1, And I saw at the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Now inside and on the back is, is a, a phrase that's used in, in ancient times to reveal the absolute complexity and completeness of the plan that God knew the end from the beginning, that he had written it out he, within, within himself. He had planned this thing that was absolute completeness that was hidden from everybody but himself. You know what that reassures me about? Not only is this thing going to fold out just like the book of Revelation says, God has a plan for every one of us, and if we will yield to him, it will full, it, it, there is a completeness yes, yes. to the plan of God that he wants for our lives. And if we will just yield if to him. If we yield, Satan can't stop it. Yeah, there, there was a meme I saw here just recently of a, a mother and a kid on a roller coaster. And over the top of it says, God says, I have a destiny for your life. And the mother's just smiling and having a great time. And over hers, a little sign that says the Holy Spirit. And then this, you have this kid terrified reaching for the mother and says, this is you. <laughs> because we, there's, there's, we, we don't know until we yield and we trust the mm -hmm. one who's taking us. That's it. And God does not promise us a utopia until Jesus comes back and rules and reigns. That means we're not going to have one now. That there's going to be hills, there's going to be valleys, there's going to be yeah. struggles, but he will walk through all of them with us. And in the process of doing that, Mary, we, we, we need to feel his hands on us because yeah. we have yielded to him. And as we do, he's molding the clay into something even the devil doesn't understand yeah. what it's going to be. I think that's why there's so much God's showing me about the rock, because he's immovable. 
He's the only one that is. I mean, everything else in our life moves. Everything else, you, you can't trust to be steadfast. And, but he's immovable. He doesn't change. So we can trust in that. Trust in him. Yep. Listen to this. I love this, this verse 2. Is this didn't an angel? Then I saw a strong angel proclaim. Why did it have to be a strong angel? Because what he was getting ready to announce had to resonate through all three heavens and hell itself. <laughs> loud voice. <laughs> With a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose the seals? Listen to verse 3. No one in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. What's that? That's hell. Was able to not only not only could they not open the scrolls, they could couldn't even, even look, look at, at it. it. <laughs> it's, can you can you imagine at this moment? All, all of hell is saying there was a scroll. <laughs> the the, the Lucifer saying there was a scroll. The Nakash is saying there was a scroll. How do we miss the scroll, dude? Absolute secrecy. Seven seals. And blinding light. I'm sure. <laughs> Guys, we, we need to look at the dynamic here. No one in heaven, no angel, no one on earth, both man or re-emerging Nephilim as mm-hmm. we enter into end-time prophecy. Or under the earth, no fallen angel, no watcher, no, no fallen seraph, no fallen cherub, no demon had the ability to either look at the scroll or loose its seals to remove the secrecy of God's plan. Let me tell you something. When God does something, it's done, mm-hmm. okay? If he decides it's going to be a secret, Michael, Archangel Michael didn't know. Gabriel didn't know. None of the none of the archangels knew. Nobody knew except for God Himself. And this and this becomes a pivotal place. You can you can you feel? This is this is a this is a historical prophetic event. Just as much as the cross, the death, burial, and the resurrection. This is pivotal in the plan of God. And John feels the weight of this. And no one is found worthy. And he realized they brought me up here. And I'm not worthy even. Well, what are we going to do? And he begins to weep and cry because he feels the weight of this. And he said, I wept much because no one was found to open or read the scroll. Sort of look at it. He wept much. That means there was an extended period where he just weep before the throne of God because he knew that that the plan of God had to be unsealed, it had to be opened for the sake of creation, and that they could and and this angel came and he announced it, and there was no response from hell, from earth, or from heaven, and the silence was deafening except for the weeping of an apostle of God. Yes, there will be more crying through this podcast. We're going to make it, though. (laughs) But it goes on. It doesn't stop there. It says, but one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And I looked in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, and Mary, he doesn't see a lion. He sees the lamb. He sees the Passover lamb, the lamb of God that was promised to Abraham. And he sees the lamb as though he was slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits that God sent out into all the earth. Now we read over that, and we, seven is absolute. Horns represent power and authority. The resurrected Lamb of God has absolute power, yes, absolute yes. authority, absolute insight, absolute wisdom. You know you can't get you can't get beyond absolute. That's right. All encompassing. <laughs> This is why one of the scriptures that has always been a, um, that has always kind of bum puzzled me is in the book of Hebrews. And it's talking about Jesus, the, the Almighty God come in the flesh, absolute perfection in motion. And it says that he was made more perfect by the things that he suffered. 
unless you connect that to Revelation chapter 5, you're going to miss what it's saying. Because only the agent of the, of the Godhead that laid down his life, that was the good shepherd in contrast to Adam, the bad shepherd, that laid down his life for his sheep, conquered hell. Let me tell you something. When Jesus died on the cross, when he gave up the ghost, hell had a problem. Yeah, it was finished. It really was. <laughs> and and when, you, when you look at the teachings of the Apostle Paul, he went down into hell and he gave the devil hell. Then he went over the chasm and preached what he had done to those in the bosom of Abraham. When he rose again, it says here in the book of Revelation that he has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's got the keys. Absolute perfection. Now we begin to see the unfolding. And Mary, what we're going to see here is the greatest worship session ever recorded in all of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and the golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So I think one of the things this is representing is all the prayers of the saints ever since Adam to this moment are contained in those bowls. And they, they're holding the bowls, but yet they fall down to worship because this is the beginning of the fulfillment of the cry of the saints since the Garden of Eden. Okay. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And the, the, king, the new King James does the same as the King James has made us kings and priests unto our God. The most accurate translation, especially when you understand the principality wars that I have taught on, is that they, you have made us a kingdom, the, the uh, complete Jewish Bible, Dr. David Stearns, I believe, underst understands this Hebraic dynamic. And verse 10 in the complete Jewish Bible says, you have made them into a kingdom for God to rule. Because at the Tower of Babel, they were divided among the principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness that had fell. And Kohanim, to serve him, and they will rule over the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands of thousands. Everyone, everyone who has ever trusted in the promise of Messiah, shouting or saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. See, one of the things that, that I think there are, there are events that can happen. You know, the, in, in the book of Hebrews, it says there's a shaking coming. There's a shaking coming. I think this caused the shaking. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine every saint, every person in all of human history that has trusted in the seed of the woman that was going to come to redeem, all gathered together with every single faithful angel, with every single faithful creature that God has created, beyond or even comprehension, in this unending sea, shout with a loud voice. It begins to resonate through the three heavens, it begins to resonate through hell itself as a mighty army that begins shaking the very heavens. That's why this is one of the greatest worship sessions ever recorded in history. But it doesn't stop there, Mary. And every creature which is in heaven, on earth, 
Now, what does the next phrase say? Under the earth. Hell. It shakes the foundations of hell, and all those, the council of darkness, the council of Hades itself, has to proclaim what comes next. That are in the sea, so all the animals, all of creation itself, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Mm-hmm. This is a moment that even hell has to come into agreement with heaven. I saw that and I had to sit down, Mary. Can you you see this? This is this is a, a pivotal point that the devil says, uh oh. I see my knee is going to bow, and I'm going to have to confess that Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like the Apostle Paul prophesied, that at the name of Jesus, things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth will have to confess that Jesus is Lord. That's right. Can you imagine the shock on the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and over Lucifer and the Nachash and all the council of hell that so hate and so violently resist the very rulership of God. At that moment, they find coming out of their lips that unto him belongs power and glory and dominion and honor and wisdom forever. That they, they prophesy their own demise. It comes out of their own lips by the events that are taking place. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm already happy. Then the four living creatures said, Ah, mean, so be it. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Oh. You see, now, now that's coming. We're racing toward this event faster than the body of Christ has ever went toward it before in recorded history. I don't quite think that we're there yet to this event, but there's echoes. Mary, we are in a season in which the Lamb will be declared worthy. There is going to be an unloosing or unsealing of the remnant around the world. Now, what I mean by remnant, and I, I, in the book that I'm working, I wish I'd have printed out the introduction because not only the remnant are those that are going to be faithful, to God and faithful to the word, regardless of what the world does, regardless even what parts of what is declared the church does that hasn't come on the, to the agreement of what we're getting ready to share. That they're going to be faithful to God, but there are many of them right now, Mary, that are in bondage. That the devil said, I got Joe or Juliet so bound up, so in bondage, I don't care how bad they want to serve God on the inside. I've got them so bound up with generational curses and Masonic things and their families and occult things and, and mind control and all these different things. I've got those so them bound up that I'm never going to have to worry about them because God is never going to be able to use them. And what they don't know is over the heart of that individual, there were seven seals placed there by Jesus, and Jesus is getting ready to loose them. Mm-hmm. He's going to take them out of prison. He's going to take them out of prison, and they're going to become Satan's worst nightmare. Yeah. I agree. I That's one of the things God showed me this week, and I thought, well, I never would have thought about that, but he kept kept reminding me about this um, commercial that they used to have on that was about, like, uh, these little boxes that were that roaches would crawl in. Like, if you had roaches in your house, and they called it a roach motel, and it'd say the roaches check in, but they never check out. And it was like, you know, on the inside of that thing, if you've ever looked at one, it's it's just a deep, deep um, pad of glue. Yeah. And so when something gets on that, I, there's no getting off. And, I mean, even if you stick that thing, you have a hard time getting your finger off of it. And he was showing me, like, people, and they and Satan had, had trapped them, led them into a thing, and it's like their feet were just stuck like in the deepest thing of glue. They, and it was like all of their might to just even make one step. And he said, I'm getting ready to loose a conquering spirit. Yes. And I was reminded of the scripture uh, that says that we're more than conquerors through him that loves us. 
and you know up above it it lists all like, through tribulations and all these things but yet we're more than conquerors and there is something i i believe as god's people will if they'll come in one accord during this season of the passover of the victory as we celebrate the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, if we will all come in accord on that one thing, whether you agree with other things and you might have differences on this, and but if we'll come into agreement and, and when we praise him and we declare in one accord, he's the only one worthy. Yes. He's the only one worthy. He's the only one that can deliver us, Mike. He's the only one that can take us out of a pit that Satan has caused us to fall into. And, and, you know, like in with all we've seen, with everything working against the body of Christ, our bodies are sick simply by the toxic environment we've been in. You know, when I, it's like I've told before, when I was young, boy, you know, and I don't blame my mom at all. She was tired of cooking and stuff. But, boy, when some things came on the market where it was easier to do, you know, the, the things that were prepackaged and stuff like that, when she had a chance, we ate <laughs> Prepackaged. We bought Doritos. We 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 started eating like they they were setting us up to eat, so we'd all be unhealthy. Yep. And so most of us have lots of bad habits in the past. And you know, even though we've changed so much in the way we eat and portions and everything, we still are. It's it's a fight. We're going to have to exercise more. We're going to have to do more to get it turned around. And so you've got people that that are struggling from things. Maybe they've had as kids allergies, things that you know that they've put in the sh- the, the uh, vaccinations. All of these things. We can see how much that they're fighting you not being vaccinated. I mean, they're they're trying to push legislation now to where you're gonna you're gonna have to be uh, vaccinated or you can't go out in public they're really pushing it you know why because somebody's got an inkling that god's getting ready to loose this conquering spirit and when it's loosed we're going to be more than conquerors over our spiritual life our walk with god we're going to be conquerors over these physical bodies that have been trodden and beaten down by all of these schemes and plans of the enemy all these years i'm telling you god's getting ready to flip this around yes and what what's the centerpiece and this this is something that that's not only in this and revelation 5 but what god has been showing you is that a true brother or sister in the lord are those that we come into agreement about the lamb that's it it's through his That's completed it. work. It's by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. It's trusting in the completed work of Christ. That if we agree there, because one of the things that has really been disturbing to me, and you you can jump on YouTube and on the internet, and you can uh, you can pick one subject, even if it's a uh, subject dealing with the minutia of end time prophecy or whatever, and you're going to find five hundred different positions, and they're all arguing am- amongst each other, and they will say if if so and so doesn't agree with the, with the exact same position on how many hairs are on the back of the Antichrist they're neck. They're following the doctrine of a demon. <laughs> yeah, they're, and they're heretics and mm-hmm. all this different stuff. No, you're a heretic if you don't believe that salvation is through the shed blood of Jesus alone yeah. and that he was the Lamb of God, he was Almighty God come in the flesh, and that he gave his life on the cross, he conquered death, hell, and the grave, he rose victorious three days later, three days, not a day and a half, Three days, because Passover that week, Jesus hung on the cross on Wednesday, not Friday. He would literally fulfilled Jonah, the, 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 uh, the promise of Jonah, that he was in the belly of the earth three days. And then he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. If we will agree on that and really understand the depths of it, Everything else will work out. It really is. But if we can't come into agreement on that, then you're not a brother and you're not a sister. No. But there's all kinds of things that people have different opinions on. But a different opinion doesn't necessarily uh, qualify you as a heretic. No. And what I'm seeing that really is concerning me is all these different things that people are talking about. And I, I'll tell you when you get in big, big trouble is when you don't, when you step out of the love walk and you start attacking. Yeah. When you step out of that, you're in dangerous territory. And you'll never be more than a conqueror because, listen to this, let me read this in Romans 8. Um, you know, it talks about um, all these things that you go through, but then it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we come into agreement, the death, the uh, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, there's such power in that, Mike, because it is the love of God. That, that is the rock in which the kingdom the rock. is built upon. And now, now let me say this, too. I know that there's programming that talks about rocks. So let's just do this. Father, we just have to ask that the truth of your word would break through any demonic power that is in programming concerning rocks, especially in the Bible. And, Father, we just ask in Jesus' name that you'd forgive the sin of the defilement of your word and any scriptures that have been used, especially with little children, so that they would never be able to come to an understanding of the truth of of Jesus is our rock, the immovable rock of our salvation. Yes. And so I'll do that before I talk about this other stuff. But but that is, I think that this is so huge because of, of, this is some year, I think what it is, is it's almost, um, 2018, in my opinion, was supposed to be the year when the Black Awakening just broke open. I think, that, and we've seen some of it. We've seen some of where this is just here and there. But I mean, there was supposed to be, in conjunction with uh, the president that didn't get elected, there was supposed to be an unbelievable amount of things happen so that they could put um, martial law into place, and then they were going to start trying to move the people that, they were wanted to re-educate into this new system they had. And so I think 2018 was supposed to be that, but God preempted it. Mm-hmm. So this, in my opinion, is the victory year. Yeah. It's a victory year. And there's not a whole bunch that the, the Kabbalistic occult people can do with a prime number. <laughs> they can do all kinds of stuff with threes and sixes and, and all this stuff, but, but we're in a prime number year. And so watch what God is getting ready to do. And I might add, if God has put his finger on a year, yeah. there ain't nothing there they ain't can nothing do. Ain't nothing they can do anyway. I, but, but it depends on whether we flow with it or not. Yeah. We can step out of it. We can make a decision and, and not flow with it. But as long as we flow with it, it's going to flow in our lives. You know, there's a scripture. Bunker busting anointing. <laughs> there's, there's a scripture. In Deuteronomy, we were talking about this morning that one can put a thousand, apply two can put ten thousand. And there's uh-huh. an exponential annotation with that, and it says the only way this can happen is that their rock sold them. But then, then it goes on to say their rock isn't our rock. When God does a thing, no matter how much that the occult trust in their ways, Kabbalists trust in their ways, they think they're set on a rock that is immovable. Their rock is not able to sustain them when the rock moves. And what enabled Israel when they were established in the rock of their salvation? They were unconquerable. Yeah, and that's where, you know, in Joshua, this in Deuteronomy, it talks about one can chase 1,000, two can put 10,000 to flight. And then in Joshua, it also talks about the one can chase the thousand. So, yeah. so those are those are very specific. We know that we're getting ready in this time frame when Joshua, when they went in and they took Jericho, the Nephilim stronghold, right? Yes. So, what are we going to see? I believe that there's an anointing coming, like was with Joshua, to tear down any stronghold, any fortress the enemies built. I believe that people are going to get set free, that they may have been struggling with things for years and years and crying out to God, saying, God, heal me, God, deliver me. Um, I I think we're getting ready to see bunker busting anointing like nothing we've ever seen, and it will be ushered in as we come on the Passover and we all declare in one accord, he is worthy. Come on. Now. Only he is worthy. Oh, honor and glory and power and, and dominion, dominion and might and wisdom. Only he is worthy. See, that that's a truth you can't argue against. No. <laughs> and they, nobody can have a different opinion of that. If they're a believer, they got that opinion. Only he is worthy. And I don't care the denomination that you claim to hold credentials with or anything else. If you do not agree on that one point... You're not his. Well, and let me, if I can take just a minute and read this one psalm. Um, 
this was one that that God showed me, and I just I kept going back to it, and <laughs> even the the presents that I I bought for the adults for the the Passover, I always try on the Passover table. I try to make that really special, and I usually get like a small present to just sit by each each plate, and I. And I <laughs> exactly where I was led and this has been probably a, a month ago because I always go to these places to see you know the best best prices and things and it's a coffee cup and it says God is my rock now listen to Psalm 18 it says I will love thee O Lord my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation in my high tower I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. You're not going to die. You're going to live. You're going to live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm probably going to throw some things in as I read this, so bear with me. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, and snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind." He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his, his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Then the channels of water were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. See, God's getting ready to defend his people. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful... With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show th thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks. That's that haughty bunch. Yes. Yeah, and, and now this is this is before Jesus came, and you know, we have His righteousness now. So this was this was based on. You know, I'm believing, I guess, because they kept the commandments. Right, faithful to the covenant right, of God. Right, okay. And so it says, For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I le leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow, a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them. That they were not able to rise, they are fallen under my feet. These demonic powers, Mike, that have held people back, that have just absolutely made people's lives miserable, they're getting ready to be yes. overthrown. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. They did... Um, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they um, hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away. 
and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou lifteth up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. As we sing his praises, folks, as we declare Jesus is the only one that's worthy, he's coming to our defense. Yes, he is. And it's all because he was the lamb that was slain who has prevailed. And it says, great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy. mercy. Well, I sound like Sylvester. Sorry, guys. And mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. Oh. I'm telling you, we are getting ready to see one of the greatest moves of God we have ever seen. And the time of waiting is over. And hell's going to respond. But you know what that says there? You teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight because the remnant that are getting ready to be set free, they're going to be scrappers in the kingdom. Yeah, because there are, um, our battle is not with flesh and blood. No. So when it's, I love that scripture where it says, you know, foot on the neck. Mm -hmm. Can't you just see that those old squeaming demons that have plotted and schemed and worked against God's people, they're going to be under our feet. We've been given authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm me. What we bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven. We're going to walk in victory like we've never seen in years and years and years. There's a scripture, and I think this is made manifest because we realize just how big God is. When Lucifer is thrown down and he's weak and right before he gets thrown into the pit, the kings of the earth will gather and say, that? Mm-hmm. You, you, you mean that shook the nations? Well, Satan likes to, to look big. His demons like to uh, the puff cast up. a shadow and look these huge things. But I'm going to tell you something. In the light of our Lord Jesus, they're nothing. Yeah. To be truthful, when you see how big Jesus is and you see what Lucifer is doing, it's like another episode of Pinky and the Brain. Mm-hmm. Whatever that is. I don't know what Pinky in the Brain is. <laughs> Two little mice that are in a laboratory trying to take oh. over the world. Uh, for those that have, I remember when the kids were little, they, we'd watch that. Uh, guys, hell itself doesn't know what's coming. The council of hell doesn't know what's coming. They they have no idea. They have no idea. They they Even though they're, they're reading the book of Revelation, you know, Satan can sit here and he can read the book of Revelation and he still doesn't have a clue. Even And even those married today in the world government that deny the word of God want to eliminate Christianity, they're working to bring to pass everything that the book of Revelation says is going to come to pass. And they probably study it more than Christians do. And still there's no comprehension because it is sealed until Jesus starts to loose the scrolls. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, our, and our safety is not in uh, knowing everything that's going to happen and the sequence that's going to happen. Is the rapture pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? Is it, is it uh, pre-wrath? What is it? I tell you what it is. Those that are found in him, when he says, yo, we're going to go. Well, and just hold on. In to, his timing. Hold, hold on, on to, to Jesus. the rock of our salvation. Yes. You know, a lot, of, a lot of times you'll, if you listen to a lot of different things and um, you know, you'll you'll start to feel confused and stuff. That's that's when we go back to the basic. Go back I go to back basics. to the rock of my salvation, and I don't have to worry about do I know everything? Do I have everything absolutely right? You know, we're we're seeking to learn more of the truth, but we don't have to have everything right. What what we have to do is hold on to the rock of our salvation. He's immovable. Yes. We will be immovable with him. He will take care of us. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's everything we need. He's yeah. he's our help in time of trouble. Let's say we don't we don't catch something. Let's say our discernment doesn't um, catch something, and and maybe we don't know what to pray, and we find ourselves in the middle of trouble. Guess what? Our rock's right there. Yeah, our, our, the rock our rock of our is salvation our is right there. We, we we need to be like the apostle Paul. Now. He was from a very wealthy, affluent family. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was, his, his mentor was Gamaliel of the school of Hillel. In fact, many believe that he was being groomed to take Gamaliel's place on the Sanhedrin. He had, he, he had unprecedented, he was the rising star within Second Temple period Judaism, the time of Christ. 
when he accepted Jesus, he walked away from his family's wealth. He walked away, had to walk away from his family. He had to walk away from all, all the prestige and the power and everything that he had. And this is what the Apostle Paul said. He said, when I look at that compared to Jesus, I consider that as dung. And I leave it all to know him mm -hmm. and the power of his resurrection. Oh, leave it all. Nothing can compare. It, and you know, I bet the Apostle Paul today was running and said, even that was too small of a price to pay just to know him. Mm. Mm. It's got to be centered in, it's Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. If your theology is not interwoven, even the commandments, Mary, and that we, we get this in understanding from the, from the Tachelet on the Zitzi, that the commandments of God are nothing unless that blue cord is interwoven. Mm. It's meaningless unless Messiah is yeah. there in the midst of That's it. That's it. That's why you got to go back and learn the Old Testament, not just disregard, disregard it and say, oh, it's the Old Covenant's passed away. you got to get back there to understand how powerful, how significant everything that happened in the New Testament is. It's all, it's all just foreshadowing Jesus. Yeah. And so you see that, and then you're able to understand it. Then we can come, in, come into agreement as and no matter what all these you know exterior things that people are talking about, we can come into agreement on that. He is the rock of our salvation, and, and he's yes. the only one worthy. And when we come into agreement with that, I believe a bunker-busting anointing is going to be released, that we are going to have a, a just like in, in um, when it talks about in Ephesians, there's a spirit of understanding, spirit of wisdom. There is a spirit of conquering that God is getting ready to loose on his people, we're going to be able to walk out of what Satan thought was utter destruction. Yes. I, we're going to see it. I And I pray that right now. Father, I ask for the demonstration of your great power to show your greatness, Almighty God, that for every person listening to us today and anybody that will listen to this in the future, Father, loose that anointing, bunker-busting anointing, um, stronghold tearing down anointing father and then i'm asking right behind it let that healing restoration anointing come in to fix what satan's tore down yes years that the locusts have eaten the canker worms eaten father it's just it, he's been trying to tear us to pieces in every single way but father because of your great name the name of jesus that rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. I cry out right now, Father, forgive the sins of this land. Forgive the sins that have, have pushed you back farther away. Father, that, that they've declared that this is not a Christian nation. We declare today, oh, yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. And, Father, we've because we've declared that, we have a president in the White House that's declaring that, that has cried out against the uh, uh, bloodshed of the innocent babies. Father, I believe that you're coming in might and power to restore your people. Yes, you are. Mary, you know I can take the prayer shawl, and I can preach Jesus from one end of that thing yeah, to the other. And I've it, seen it, you do it. it. It's, a, it's a now even putting it over your shoulders is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, mm -hmm. the anointing to come upon the stripes that are on a prayer shawl. And, and that, that, in a sense, I think that's where we're kind of being head right now. Upon his, the, the stripes that are upon his back, we are healed yes. and we are made whole. That right now there is going to be a supernatural, uh, the Holy Spirit is going to take uh, the, the prayer shawl, if you will, and put it upon the remnant so that the stripes that are upon his back, the realization of that and the fulfillment of that in their healing would be manifest in their lives. That's it. And that everything they do is going to be under the cloak of Messiah. Yeah. It's going to be under the unction, the anointing of Messiah, the mantle of Messiah. And that as we walk the kingdom, it's his royalty, it's his purpose, that everything we do is going to be intertwined in the rock of our salvation, in the lamb who was slain That's and right. rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he rules and he reigns, yes. and he's going to reign in the life of the remnant, he's going to reign in the life of the believer. He'll have a holy they people. Are, <laughs> they become Messiah-centric in everything because only on that rock does everything else function properly. That's it. Preach it, sweetheart. And I'll tell you that what what would absolutely cause the enemy to gnash his teeth 
years and years and years of pharmaceuticals, years and years of pesticides and fungicides. They've got a fungus now that they, they don't even know what they're going to do with because it's, they can't clean it out of everything. All of these things, yet God's going to raise up a people and say, I'm going to restore them. I'm going to take everything you've done from the time they were in the wombs and you've battered their bodies and you've battered their minds and you've, you've done mind control and you've, you've used technology and you've tortured little babies. Watch my God raise us up out of the miry clay and watch him set us on that rock of our salvation and we will be a testimony of his great power. There is going to be a fire release from God. It's coming. That's, that's going to burn up Babylon. It's going to yes. burn up the chaff. It's going to burn up sin. Mary, it's going to burn nanotech out of people's bodies. Yeah, it's going, it's going it. to you burn. It. It's going to burn disease out of their bodies. Yeah. It's going to burn sickness out of their bodies. That's right. That's right. We're, we're going to have new cells. You know, there's there's the all when the enemy comes in. That's that's why you know people. Um, that's why we're talking about closing doors, making sure the enemy doesn't have any, you know, tentacle that he can try to place in us. Because where the enemy is, death comes. It's where, where that is, where he's got a tentacle and he's got a place to go, he brings death with him and destruction. That's all he does. But we get those tentacles out of there, and we, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we say, cleanse us, Father. Yeah. You know, forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Then we're inviting the healer. Yes, to are. just flow through our bodies. And I believe there's a physical attribute to that. It's going to start renewing the cells. We may, there may be people listening that need a new liver. There may be people listening that need new lungs. That's available with the power of God. It and is. it's part of, God, we're walking out of these old stinking curse places. We're walking out. We're leaving it behind. Father, we're not going to grab a hold of Babylon. We're, we're not going to grab a hold of Egypt. But we're going to grab a hold of the kingdom of God where life and health flows. Yes, we are. And, Father, what we cry in this hour are two things. That Jesus would be exalted in all things. That he yes. takes preeminence. Yes, he alone is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And, Father, I ask that he would come and that he would loose the fire of heaven in the people of God, those that are called by his name, that are blood-washed, blood-bought, and their heart's desire is to live a life that it's in agreement with the blood of Messiah. Yes. Father, and that it, was, it, it will burn off. It will, we could be like the, four, uh, the three men in the, in the fiery furnace. Father, when the Son of God's there, Everything that holds us back is burnt off, and we don't even smell like smoke. Father, I ask that you would let the fire of God fall on the remnant. Yes. Father, in this day and this hour. And, Father, let it cause hell for hell itself because you're going to set those free that have been sealed and hidden and that have yes. been waiting in the background for what you're going to do now. Yes, and, Father, as we praise you and declare that only you're worthy, as this Passover season comes, Father, let that anointing flow. As what you inhabit the praises of your people, as we join in one accord and declare that only you are worthy, let that healing flow. Yeah. And Father, as every one of them come out of Egypt and out of Babylon, Father, let the word be fulfilled that we record in Scripture that those that ate all the lamb, mm. whose blood was over the doorpost, that there was not one single feeble one among yes. them, Father, yes. we ask. In Jesus' name. And we will be praying for you guys. We love you so much. And we just thank you so much for your prayers for us. It means more than we can ever say. Yes. And we pray that you'd have such a blessed Passover. I pray that God would just fill your tables with wonderful, healthy food and that you would have a blessed season. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spaulding here to tell you about the Go Therefore 2019 conference. This year's gathering will be at the University of Northwest Ohio Event Center, July 26th and 27th. The conference will conclude Sunday, July 28th at Calvary Chapel of Lima. This is the largest gathering of acclaimed Bible teachers, researchers, and prophecy experts anywhere in the United States. Here's our speaker list. Author, Bible teacher, and host of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, Dr. Michael Lake. Bradley Dean, host of Sons of Liberty Radio. Author and founder and director of Peacemakers Outreach, Dr. John Diamond. Russ Dizdar of Shatter the Darkness Ministries. Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer of Pass the Salt Ministries. Pastor and author, Dr. Carl Gallups. Researcher, Carl Tykrib. Publisher of the Wisconsin Christian News, Rob Pugh. Author, Douglas Woodward. 
prophecy expert John Halleth, David Arthur of Alphabet Man Ministries, filmmaker Tom Dunn, researcher David Paxton, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence researcher Mark Trump, Created Equal founder Mark Harrington, the last evangelist filmmaker David Hevener, author, researcher, and lecturer L.A. Marzulli, author Chad Schaefer, British filmmaker Mark Sutherland, pastor and musician Leighton Howerton, former combat veteran and author Jamie Walden, and of course, me, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Tickets are only $59. You can secure your seat for the Go Therefore Conference at this website, gothereforeconference.com. This event will sell out quickly. Ticket and hotel information is at the conference website, gothereforeconference.com. Hope to see you there. Oh, 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 oh,